Hey guys, this is Doug with Basement Level Magic. I am just starting uh, Origins Pack for Win Swiss Draft. Uh, this pack sucks because there's so many good cards and I can only pick one of them. Like, do I take a Sentinel? Do I take a Hangerback Walker? That is so tough. I mean, Cruel Revival, sure, great card, but what do you do in this situation? I'm going to take the Hangerback Walker. Uh, there is a zero chance we'll get the Sentinel back. Oh man, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm going to take the Hangerback Walker. And hope I don't regret it. <laughs> what a pack one. Whoever gets in pack two is going to be like, what did he take? <laughs> that was better than this. Uh, that may be one of the only rares that I actually would take um, over the Sentinel. Wow, but it leaves us open, so we can pick the best card here. Um, probably Blessed Spirits. I don't see anything else that looks crazy. I don't know that I want to play red based on what I've seen so far. The Pyromancer's Goggles. Five mana. Uh, lets you copy a red spell, but. Honestly, you just don't draw enough to make it worthwhile. So I am going to take the Blessed Spirits. Alright, best card here. Probably toss up between, uh, and this is maybe his personal opinion. I like the Elvish Visionary a lot. Um, uh, the Enthralling Victor is probably the pick, but Deadbird Shaman, if I had seen a bunch of good black, would be fine too. Um, I'll go ahead and take the Victor. Alright, so here we have one good green card, a couple decent red cards, a couple decent white cards. And an okay black card. So I think it's okay to pick anything in white or red at this point um, that I think I'll play. Uh, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Glory Chaser. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the Call of the Full Moon. Uh, just the fact that all the opponent has to do is play two spells in one turn to to get rid of it um, really means that. You can play it on turn, say you play a one draw, play it on turn two. Like by turn three, it's realistic that your opponent could remove it. Um, here, so neither one of the red cards is any good. Um, the Amper Tactician in white is good. The Vastwood Gorger is good, although they're not usually hard to come by. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Amper and Tactician. Yeah, if I end up playing, well, I mean, Hangerback Walk goes in any deck, so playing white is, doesn't necessarily mean that I regret my decision um, early on to take the uh, Hangerback Walker over the the bomb white card, but. Uh, let's see. So, I would say I'm still fairly open. I could go red or white or change my mind. I'm not crazy about a 4-drop 2-2. Two -two. Um, so I'm going to take, even if it does fly, and attacks with a 3-3. Three -three. I'm going to take the throwing knife. It's a good aggressive card. can be removal. Uh, it's just got a lot of versatility, and that's what I like about it. I think we continue to head towards white, um, keep getting pretty decent cards. There's been like a marginally playable black card in every pack, but that's it. So I think these packs that we've seen were just pretty short on black cards, um, and the ones that people tend to pick are the ones that they would be willing to splash, like, um, like the black removal is pretty much the best removal. In origin, so uh, the room will get snatched up, but then people don't actually play the creatures. I find a lot, um, and if they do, what they're probably playing is like the 
the imp, the fetid imp. Um, here, I mean, it's it's between Alchemist Vile and Dragon Fodder. Um, I think probably Dragon Fodder is the way I would like to go. I mean, our, our red is not that good. Our white is okay. So I could potentially see us changing directions here if things don't come together soon. So a Mighty Leap looks like the best pick here. Um, Rambler, I wouldn't mind having one Rambler, but it's a common. And look, there's one. Um, six drop. It's an okay finisher, and I have definitely seen it played where the, the three mana for one damage to target player is relevant, but I think we stick with the tactician for now. Just nothing here. Uh, we'll take the Sylvan Messenger on the sideboard. I'm going to take the Battle Priest. I almost never play it. I mean, I guess in the right deck that could be a thing. Kithian's Tactics, if you watched my last draft, um, which was a uh, draft number five on the channel. Um, I, I discussed Kithian Tactics a bit, um, and I do think it's a good card, and, and in a white-red shell, it probably is at its best. Okay, so Dispoiler of Souls, not something I'm crazy about picking up here. Uh, Lightning Javelin would be great. Seismic Elemental would be great. Um, I would take a Cleric, uh, since I already have one. I think that might come back around. Um, Tower Geist is excellent, but I don't think I, since all the picks I really would want are in red, uh, the idea of taking another white card um, just means that I, I might not have a chance to take a red card later. So I'm going to take the Lightning Javelin. It's uh, definitely good removal. You get a scry. Um, I think it's a toss-up. The, the Elemental probably is is very close. And I think there's a lot of players out there who would probably take it first, as it can usually win you the game. Uh, but we'll see what happens. All right, so options here include Tragic Arrogance, which is probably the pick, uh, Anointer of Champions, Gear Crafter, Chandra's Fury. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Tragic Arrogance is probably exactly what we want. Here, I think we're pretty limited to... I, I don't like the Vryn Wingmare at all. Um, if it was a 2-2 maybe for 3 with this terrible ability, I would like it. I mean, at best, I think it's a sideboard card. Um, and the Jailer also, I just don't... I think it's just maybe like 1 mana too expensive for its ability. So I think here we probably take the scout. I mean, we're, we're headed towards a pretty aggressive deck anyway. Um, and I think that in that shell, the token freeblade fits perfectly. I would would not mind seeing an act of treason uh, come back around. I don't know if that's realistic. Celestial flare. If I got one, I don't know, sixth pick or seventh pick. If it, if it was still around, I would take. But I don't want it over a token free blade. Um, and I also don't want to take a majoring bully over a knight of the pilgrim's road. So I will snatch that up. I've got like a theme going. I guess when I draft, I'm going to draft aggressive decks with lots of two drops. Um, so we have a removal spell versus a combat trick. I would love an Enshrouding Mist, but I think Suppression Bonds... Gosh, I have a lot of 4-drops. Let's see, so... Looking at what we got here, we have... Throwing Knife is a potential removal spell. Mighty Leap, Combat Trick, Pseudo Removal. Uh, Lightning Javelin, Removal. Ah, I think the Bonds is, is just slightly better in this situation. Um, but being that I'm making an aggressive deck, I, I may have wanted to go the other direction 
Um, here I'm going to take the Warhorn. I actually think I may play it in this deck. And I don't think Amperin Tactician number 3 is something I want over a Bonded Construct. I'd rather get out early and get something done. Uh, I will take the... What will I take? I guess I will take the Artificer... Zendikar Incarnate. It's a strong card I don't like playing against. I guess no one's in green-red. Uh, here are the Bellows Lizard, I guess, for the sideboard. Healing Hands for the sideboard. I mean, it's nice they're, col they're the colors of our deck, so we can cast them should we need to, but I don't think they see play. Brawler's Plate, also not something I think I'm going to play. Equipping for four just seems too expensive. I mean, I can see where it would definitely have the potential to win you the game. Uh, just giving you trample and allowing you to get in when otherwise the ball board was stalled out, but yeah, not for this deck. I need some fatties. Although, a Brawler's Plate on a Prickle Boar <laughs> could be interesting. 7-7 seven, seven for Striker with Trample. That sounds good. Alright, so Chandra's Ignition. There's that Enshrouding Mist I wanted. And a second. Wow. I mean, it's like... Whatever color I'm in in this draft, I will see <laughs> like the two most complicated cards to decide between <laughs> possible on my openings. So Chandra's Ignition is a bomb and can definitely win you the game. Sentinel of the Eternal Watch is a bomb and can you imagine if I pass this one as well and the same player gets both? Um, there's there's like zero chance I see the Chandra's Ignition back, but I'm taking. Am I taking the Sentinel? I think I'm taking the Sentinel this time. Yeah. It's just too good. Wow. So the player to my right is not playing blue. Um, and there's not much in here that I think I absolutely want. See, the red card here is... My deck is primarily white. The red card here is a double red costed card. There's nothing in white that I want. The Crone Jailer just isn't good enough. Um, so the pick is between Ravaging Blaze or Subterranean Scout or Firefiend Elemental. I have enough enough cards that aren't creatures that probably Ravaging Blaze has a good chance to have spell mastery, I think it's just too good not to take it. So Topin Freeblade versus Aroas' Champion. Got blue is way, way open. It's the same as the last draft I did. Uh, nobody was in blue. <laughs> um, I think I take the two drop. Let's think about this. So I do have Warhorn, which makes Double Strike significantly better. Throwing Knife also makes Double Strike significantly better. But I think the Rose's Champion is a card that you have to be in red-white in order to even consider. So I'm going to take the white card, hoping that I get the red-white card back. And now... I think I will take the Tactician, but I don't think I play three. Uh, here I will definitely take the Anointer of Champions. It's a great card. I'll take a Chandra's Fury for the board against the Thopter deck. It can be very good. Here I will take the Mighty Leap. Not sure I would play two, but it's worth, worth considering. I'll take the Oat Ox for the board. Bloodlust, 
also for the board. So if I'd taken that sentinel, not the hangar back walker, I would I would have two sentinels. Which at six mana, I don't know. Uh, I, it probably would have been worth playing. I mean, I'll, it would have been worth playing. I'll just say that. But I don't know. Hanger back walker, especially early, puts so much pressure on an opponent, especially with something like Warhorn. And I think because of the hanger back walker, we do want to play. Um, let's see. Yeah, we do want to play the one Kithian's tactics. I thought I had in the sideboard. So what don't we want to play? We've got two cuts to make. I mean, I could definitely see cutting the Glory Chaser just because only needing one color early would be nice. Although we do have two red two drops. I mean, here we're, we're just hate drafting the Water Courser. Um, yeah, I'll take the Rambler. Against the right deck, it could be something we want. I don't think we need it though. I think we're pretty low to the ground. Maybe the victor doesn't have a place? Two Bellows Lizards in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. All right, well, so let's put this thing together, make it into something. I mean, it looks good, definitely looks good. I don't think I want to cut a creature. I think if I did, it would be the Glory Chaser, but I'm okay with a 2 2 Menace if it comes down on turn one. If it doesn't, I'm not happy about having it at all, but um, I think probably we cut a Mighty Leap. I think one's fine. I don't think we need two. Warhorn and Throwing Knife both sound good to me. Tactic sounds good, especially with the Hangerback Walker. Suppression Bonds, of course. Tragic Arrogance, yes. Lightning Javelin, yes. Ravaging Blaze, yes. So I guess we are going to cut one creature. Uh, so things that trigger the Blessed Spirits include Suppression Bonds. And that's it. It does fly, and I don't have much evasion. So that's a consideration. I feel like the victor might not have a place in this deck. I think it might. I mean, unless unless when we want to end the game, the opponent has a two-power creature that we just can't get past. Um, you know, what's the point? So I'm going to take it out. Uh, so that's 23. Other things to consider. Priest, like I said, I think is too expensive. Healing Hands is sideboard card at best. Yoke Docks is in case we need to stall the board. Same with Guardians of Melitus. So cards we consider playing include Playing 14 creatures, none of their spells. We have a wrath effect, essentially a wrath effect. Yeah, I think I think we're good with this. 
um, until we see what we're up against. So because of that double red and wanting to make sure that I'm able to cast the Ravaging Blaze, I am going to I'm going to adjust the land slightly and add that and then have a look. So yeah, 6 red, 13 white. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. Alright, I will see you in round 1. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, it really does let us know that you're paying attention out there.